Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. In today's video, we are looking at five mistakes that you keep making post-patch. I do lots of coaching, analyzing games from people of all sorts of divisions. I play in the elite division, but I also play weekend league, champs playoffs, games where I'm playing against people of all different sorts of levels. And I see lots of common mistakes that people keep making. So a video like this is here to help you guys hopefully avoid these mistakes or at least do them less. And by doing so, it will improve your FIFA 23 experience and in general, make you a better player at the game. The first one we're going to talk about is team. All the others are going to be gameplay related. I think that people do put a bit too much emphasis on team. There's so many people that when they talk to me, they don't talk about how they can actually get better at the game. They just talk to me about the team as if the team's everything. I've hit 20-0 on a free 400k team this year. i 20 20-0 on a god squad. The team does help, but it's not everything. But there are definitely some things that people do in their teams that hold them back. Now, this team's a little bit different in terms of this is me playing in my 4-3-5 uh, formation. So not everyone's going to use five attackers like I do here. But... Depending on the formation you use, and I offer lots of different custom tactics videos with different lots of different formations. I say in each video what type of players you want in each position. But so many people play a formation or tactic and then don't build a team that suits it. For example, not as big a deal anymore, but at one point the Traveller shots were crazy and people were not playing left footers on the left and right footers on the right, which you needed to do to do the Travellers. That's just an example of people not building the team right. Now, I still see so many people running around with Haaland, Morientes, players like that. Whilst they're still okay, I do think, and I wish that I wasn't having to say this, but I do think you're holding yourself back. The best players you should be using now, generally speaking, are smaller, quicker players who are good on the ball. Being good on the ball is something that lengthy players just don't really tend to have because their agility is always going to be very low. When their agility and dribbling stats in general are low, they're just not going to be good on the ball. You need probably high 80s minimum to be good on the ball in this game. Dribbling itself is pretty hard, and if you don't have good dribbling stats, it just becomes near impossible. I wish that I wasn't saying this, but it is just the case, and this channel is all about being honest, brutally honest with you guys to hopefully give you the best advice to actually help you improve. So, I would be ditching the lengthy players up front for the most part and really trying to work, really trying to work on having players who are good on the ball, lots of pace. In defence, it's somewhat similar. I think in defence, you need probably to be an elite centre back, you need at least 80 plus pace on this game right now. Yes, sure, you could use someone with 75 plus pace, and a lot of the time they might be great, but they're always going to be a little bit of a liability, a little bit of a risk when it comes to the through balls in behind. So you do have to watch out for that. Another thing I see sometimes I see people using small keepers and lower rated keepers, just use a high rated keeper. The high rated keepers who are tall, like Courtois, Neuer, uh, Donnarumma, they basically go for their fodder price. So you're never going to lose coins on them. They're worth the investment. There's lots of little things people do with their teams that when you just do one of them, it doesn't hurt you too much. But when you start doing it a few times, the team starts to play a lot worse. And even if you're playing really well in game, the team will be holding you back. Like I said, don't emphasize crazy amount on the team, but play around the meta if you want to be more successful. So that's number one, building a team that just doesn't suit the meta. Let's go on to number two. One of the most common mistakes that I see people consistently make on FIFA, and I can be guilty of this as well sometimes, is giving the ball away cheaply. Now, this might often not lead to something major. And quite often on this FIFA, I feel like you can see goals where you look at them and you're like, there's really not too much I could have done there. But nearly always, it will have come from you giving the ball away stupidly. Now, don't get me wrong. You giving the ball away stupidly does not mean you deserve to concede. However, there's a simple rule that I always say to people when I'm coaching them. I say, if you have the ball... You can score, your opponent can't. If you don't have the ball, your opponent can score and you can't. So it's very simple. Does this mean just play super negative and passive? No, you don't need to. But just being a little bit smarter in possession is really important. Look at this goal that I end up scoring here. So here, my opponent, if we look back, my opponent, I want to rewind to a good bit. Here, 
He's got plenty of space here. He could take another touch there. Let me get my pen software out of it up. Wait for it to load. Here, he could easily run that way and then pass up there, pass to one of these guys. He could turn back, go there. He has plenty of options. There's no reason he should give the ball away here, but this is what people do so often. They end up doing just a lazy pass that ends up costing them. So he gives the ball away there, and look what happens. A counter-attack. He maybe presses a bit too aggressive. He gets a bit unlucky not to get that, but all this has come from just giving the ball away silly. He did not need to do that. This goal was very avoidable. If you have 90% passing, that means you're giving the ball away 1 in 10 passes. If you have 80%, it means you're giving away 1 in 5. Keeping the ball will not only help you score more goals, but it will stop you conceding lots of silly goals. So many people would instantly improve at this game if they just played a little bit smarter and didn't give the ball away as much. That is even more important post-patch because with pace and being so important on the game now, if you give the ball away in a bad area, it's so easy with how through balls and pace are on this game to, for people to quickly get in behind. So be very careful not to give it away, especially in bad areas. Now in this clip, we are going to be talking about something that is very important on this FIFA, especially even more post-patch. It is dealing with through balls. <clears throat> now, this is probably something that applies the higher up you go a lot more, because the higher up you go, the more people will abuse and spam through balls because they are broken on this game and by that i mean they're just op they are so crazy that if you do not mark them you are going to concede a lot of goals so one little thing that i do on it is i sometimes use the second um, not the second man press the partial team press that's when i double tap r1 you can see you get like a turquoise triangle above your defender's head that means he just follows that player running it's very good for stopping the run there and you can see there I, there's two ways of stopping through balls. You can either press the man on the ball to force him into passing or turning back or trying to block the pass, or you can mark the pass in behind. Now, because I'd done the partial team press, these players were already covering the through ball, so I knew I could press it. I force him into the pass and end up getting the ball there. Very easy. But a lot of the time, people either press and don't do anything to actually mark the runs in behind, or they just don't mark the runs in behind and don't press. So... You have to be very careful. If you are not marking through balls on this game, you are going to concede a lot of goals and not have a fun time. And then the other end of the pitch, look here. I end up scoring here. Rewind that back a bit. Here, he doesn't mark it quick enough. Player has a lot of pace. And it is very easy to get in on goal. That's all come from not marking the through ball in behind. If you don't mark the through ball quick, like there, he's pressed, but he's not done anything with this guy. You're going to end up conceding a lot of goals. There's a great example at one end of the pitch, me marking it, and at the other end, my opponent not. Don't be wrong, I sometimes do this as well, but it is key to be marking these through balls. That is a mistake I see a lot of people making, and they concede a lot of stupid goals. In this clip here, we are going to show another mistake that I see people make a lot. And now that people are starting to use better dribblers, and we're starting to get some really good attackers on the game, and lots of people have coins to get good attackers with good weak foots, good ability on the ball. This is a mistake that a lot of people get screwed by. It is diving in. Now watch this goal. Get it to Ginola. And there, he just dives past me. Pretty crazy finish. Now, there's a few things here as well that it comes back to. I've said about having players who are good on the ball, good with the five-star weak foot, and having a good keeper. These are all noticeable here. Look here. I turn with Ginola because he's got the weak foot. He's good on the ball. And this is Ariola in there. I don't think Courtois, Neuer, or Donnarumma let that in. But if we watch the defending here, at this point here, if he just holds L2 and marks this area, it's going to be very, very hard for me to turn his man. Maybe I could have turned that way and gone to one of these guys. But I should never be able to just turn like that. It's a nice turn by me. But I should never be able to turn so easy and get such a free goal. That is poor defending by my opponent. He'll probably be pretty frustrated himself about that. Don't dive in. Get your team in shape. And then in the box when you have to defend someone, especially someone who's got a good weak foot and good at dribbling, hold L2 to jockey, stand your ground, and it will make you so much harder to get round. So many people don't do this and end up conceding stupid goals that cost them. 
Historically, on the last few FIFAs, one of the easiest guaranteed ways to score consistently was ball rolling a keeper in a one-on-one. -on -one. So often, if you got one-on-one -on -one and people rushed the keeper, it was just free because all you had to do was do a simple ball roll furthest away from the keeper. He would fall over. You would tap it into an open net. On FIFA 23, one-on-ones are probably the hardest they've been in a long time. And this is because one, keepers are so fast. And two, defenders are very fast if you're not sprinting. Since the latest patch, defenders don't catch up quite as much. But if you stop sprinting with your attacker, the defenders will catch you very quickly as well. So the combination of keepers being quick off the line and defenders being fast if you're not sprinting means you generally have to sprint and get your shot off quick. But when you're sprinting, your touch isn't as good, your shooting isn't as good, and the keepers on this game just save pretty much every single one-on-one. -on -one. And the ball roll it doesn't work at getting around the keeper now. So you don't really have an option other than shooting, and the keepers save it a lot. So a mistake I see a lot of people make is not rushing the keeper out and taking advantage of keepers being RP and one-on-ones. So there, I'm in behind with Chip Frubel. He starts to bring him out, and honestly, look what I've taken a touch here. Look where the ball goes. The ball goes from there to about there before I shoot. If you look back, his keeper's there. He probably could have got from like there to about there by the end of that clip. That would have been a very easy save in my opinion. But because he doesn't bring the keeper out, it's a very easy finish across the goal. Across the goal finishes on this game, if the keepers are not off the line... Generally go in at nearly every time with a good shooter. But if he'd have rushed his keeper out there, I can almost guarantee he'd have jumped on top of the ball or been so close to me, I just wouldn't have been able to score. And the thing is, if I'd have, if I'd have seen he was rushing his keeper out and I had to stop sprinting to try and lob it, I probably would have been caught anyway. Rush your keeper out, take advantage of keepers being really strong in one-on-one -on -one situations. It is a mistake I see a lot of people do. Using your keeper like this and getting good with it can very quickly lead to you winning games that you probably shouldn't. Hopefully this video has helped you out, guys. I appreciate your support a lot on the channel. Thank you for watching my content. Hope you guys are doing well and enjoyed FIFA 22. 22? FIFA 23. As always, keep it spicy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.